shall be to provide recommendations and feedback to the receiver on the implementation of the recovery plan. The committee is comprised of the chief executive officer of any of the distressed municipality, the president of the governing body of the distressed municipality or designees, and one member appointed by the county commissioners and one member appointed by the governor. Uh, shall repeat that the advisory committee members shall receive no compensation for their services uh, and the committee shall meet with the receiver at least twice per month to discuss the recovery plan. Meetings of the committee shall be in, in accordance with 65 PA uh, chapter 7 relating to open meetings. Uh, there is a duty to consult. The receiver shall consult with the advisory committee prior to exercising any of the power, powers under sections 706A, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9. And the advisory committee shall terminate in conjunction with the expiration of the receivership as provided for under section 710. So to our first item of business, uh, the minutes of the October 13th meeting, meeting have been distributed uh, previously and then also a hard copy here at today's meeting. Um, I'd like to open that up for a motion to approve. So move. Seconded. We have a motion by Mayor Kirkland and a second by Kelly Diaz. <laughs> Had a blank there. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, I'll put the motion to a vote. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, have the same right. Hearing none, the motion passes. Uh, and then to the third agenda item, an update on the status of the receiver's recovery plan. Uh, I'd like to defer to my chief of staff, uh, VJ Kapoor, for that update. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Receiver. Thank you, members of the uh, the committee. Uh, what I have for you today is a is a is a brief update on uh, the the recovery plan and the efforts to implement it. Uh, last week, uh, we received uh, approval from Commonwealth Court, uh, Judge Crompton, uh, approving the recovery plan uh, as we had filed it and had written it. Uh, we had indicated that this was really an initial recovery plan. Uh, we've been on the ground here in terms of the receiver's team for about two months and we've been spending a lot of time trying to get our arms around some of the issues that are facing the city of Chester, uh, both in terms of its finances as well as, as, as of its operations. Um, the, uh, the order, I believe, is, is on uh, our website. Uh, there's a couple of items that I just want to bring to the, to the committee's attention um, that I think are, are important, not only for us, but also for the, uh, for the committee to understand. Uh, the, the first of which is, uh, you know, in, in this order, uh, the court recognizes uh, one of the big problems we have, which is that we have a police pension fund that is due to run out of money uh, by March uh, of, around March or April of next year, which is certainly uh, early next year, uh, and that what we need to do as part of our recovery plan, as part of next year's budget, which I'll talk about in a moment, is to make sure that the city is paying its full uh, minimum municipal obligation, which is essentially what the city should be putting in uh, each year. Uh, that is a difficult thing to do. The minimum municipal obligation for the city of Chester is around $10 million. I think it's around $10.2 million this year. Uh, that's on a budget of about $50 million. Uh, so that's a significant, um, uh, it's a significant outlay. And uh, in prior years, the city has not been able to make the full payment uh, because of the other aspect of, of what it needs to do, which is to provide vital and necessary services to, uh, to its residents. Uh, those include, obviously, police, fire, uh, and, and, and public works, uh, as well as a variety of the other uh, uh, services that, that, a, that a city does. So, um, you know, the, the court, I believe, um, you know, really understands and, and, and you know, cited the, the tension uh, between continuing vital services and, and paying these obligations, and that is something that we're going to have to look very hard at uh, in, the, uh, in, in the upcoming budget. Um, but what the court was very clear about uh, was that uh, the city does need to pay its, its, uh, its minimum municipal obligations. Um, and that uh, it needs to comply with, uh, with those funding requirements. Uh, and both the receiver as well as myself and others uh, have represented to the court uh, that, that that is something that, that needs to be part of uh, the, uh, the budget process. Again, that's going to be, I think, a, 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 a difficult thing to do. 
uh, and something that uh, you know we'll be talking about in the in the coming weeks to the um, to to the uh, to the committee. Uh, the court also uh, requires us uh, within 45 days of the order, which is which is basically kind of the end of October, to come back to the court or submit to the court a status report uh, on um, on a variety of things that are that are surrounding the city, essentially on the, on, on the city's kind of health. So. The application of Act 205 funds. So these these are these are funds that uh, uh, are used to go into pensions, the payment of MMOs, uh, workforce needs, um, uh, detailed information regarding the 2021 budget and the ability to kind of pay for pension and other financial obligations, and to, to detail our ability, uh, the city's ability to provide vital and necessary services. So we'll we'll certainly have. Um, uh, that's some, some, something obviously we will certainly um, comply with as, as, uh, as part of the order. Uh, uh, the, the next thing I want to talk about is, uh, and I've provided this to you all, in, in light of the, um, the dire status of, of the police pension fund, uh, at, the, uh, at the pension board meeting uh, yesterday, one of uh, the, the receiver uh, issued a, a, I think I guess you'd call it a directive, uh, to the pension board regarding uh, police drop payments uh, and, and basically putting a temporary suspension on these defer, deferred retirement option payments. Uh, this is implementing uh, one of the initiatives in the plan, uh, LEG01, this is on page 25 of the plan, which requires addressing the cash flow shortage in the police pension plan. And basically what, what this is doing is uh, uh, this is putting a temporary suspension on the payments of those lump sum payments uh, until we can develop a graduated uh, payout of drop monies. Uh, because right now, those, those accounts, uh, which are part of the pension fund, uh, uh, you know, can, uh, if, if, if folks go out and take all those, those plans out, we, we could have the effect of essentially like a run on the bank. Right, in which case we'll deplete assets sooner than March or April, which is which which would mean uh, we've got less time to uh, to uh, to craft a solution to this. So um, uh, this was a directive to the pension board. Again, this is not going to change the value of what those drop accounts are, or the ability to earn drop accounts or anything like that. All it does is the timing of when any future payment of drop account monies may be paid out to retirees. Uh, the third area that I wanted to just touch on is the uh, the 2021 budget process. What we've been doing over the past couple of months is, you know, looking hard and trying to understand the city's finances, but at the same time also understand uh, how the city can provide the vital and necessary services uh, and pay for the pensions, both of which, by the way, are, are required under receivership in, in Act 47. Uh, you know, one of the things that's obviously a challenge, we're in a time of COVID, which, is a, which, is, which makes the ability to project revenues much more difficult um, than in, in years past. You know, the other thing that we have here is we have essentially a, a still about one third of our employees uh, furloughed from, from April. And we're essentially working with a, a part-time public works department, which is not something in the long term is viable. That's just that's that's not something that, that that's not a situation, particularly as we get into the winter months, um, that the city can can um, can can afford to do, not in terms of financially, but just in terms of, of providing um, services. Uh, so so you know what we're trying to put together, and we will we will, we will be coming back to the committee, not at the next meeting, but perhaps the next meeting after that. Uh, if, if it's done uh, with just kind of our analysis of of how we may be able to you know uh, craft next year's budget, uh, and uh, and again I want to be very clear with uh, with the committee that's not an easy thing we're seeing right now. Um, even in some of our preliminary numbers, there's still a pretty significant gap between that, uh, and um, uh, you know and and we've got some very difficult decisions to make uh, and and to to bring to you all for. For, for discussion as well. So I wanted to let you all know that that is, that is indeed on the, on the radar. That is something that we're working towards and, and we're probably about on the expenditure end, probably about 85% there. I think we have a good sense of what, what the story and what the situation is. Um, but, uh, but I think the key is gonna be how do we, how do we, how do we put it all together? Uh, and, uh, and again, with the dual requirements as, as, uh, as, you know, as, as required by the law and also by the order from the judge is um, it's going to be a very 
difficult thing to do to both pay the pension and retiree health care obligations as well as to um, pay for services. And just while, while I'm on the issue of retiree health care and pensions, there, there's a couple of things that were learned that I think is uh, some of, the, some of the, the committee may know or may not. Uh, right now, we are in the process, and the city has been over the last year, of trying to move retirees who are on the city's plan to a Medicare supplemental plan. And that is something that is required by contract, by the various contracts and the collective bargaining agreements, but for, for a variety of reasons. Uh, a lot of times the retiree not wanting to sign up for, for Medicare, um, they've remained on the city's plan. That plan is about twice as expensive as the, um, as the Medicare supplemental plan. And the Medicare supplemental plan is, has got as good or better benefits as the city's plan. Uh, the city's plan, by the way, and this is, this is something that, that uh, you know, I think is important for the panel to know and to understand <clears throat> is that the prescription benefits right now for retirees, for most of the retirees, are $1 retail copays and $3 mail order copays, which are, um, which is not something we've seen probably since the 1980s. Uh, and um, those are incredibly costly uh, and uh, just something that the city really frankly can't afford long term. When we when were doing the budget process, another fact came out to us. Uh, what we were trying to understand, kind of the overall cost of, of retiree benefits, that's pensions as well as retiree health care, as a percentage of our revenues in the city. Um, and what we learned was if, if the city made its full minimum municipal obligation pension payment and its retiree health care, that would consume one out of every three general fund dollars. So for every $3 we bring in, if we just paid the minimum amount, what we should be paying over there, we'd be spending 33% of our general fund budget on that. And you can imagine if that's where that money is going, the ability for us then to reinvest in services such as police services where we are um, significantly understaffed uh, and in, um, you know, in, in, in our public works, uh, uh, you know, where we're, again, most of our, our options right now are, are part-time. Um, that is something long term that is just not sustainable. It just isn't. Uh, and um, again, I think next year's budget, when we have to put all this together, I think we'll, um, you know, I, I, we'll be able to see that on paper and it'll be a little bit easier than me kind of talking about this uh, in the abstract uh, as we put it together. Um, you know, there's a lot of, again, there'll be a lot of tough, tough choices I think we've got to make in the, uh, in, in the coming weeks. That said, I do think and, and we do feel confident that there is a path forward here for the city of Chester. We, we really, truly do. Uh, we don't think it's going to be easy uh, to do it. It, it is going to be, it's going to take a lot of uh, effort on a variety of different fronts, um, including retiree benefits, including operations, and including reinvestment in the city. Uh, and it's going to take the help from a lot of partners. Uh, the city's not going to be able to do it alone. We're not going to be able to, able to cut our way out of this. And we're not going to be able to get our way out of this with a bunch of money dropping in. It's going to take both. And that's sort of the conclusion that we are we're coming to as we, uh, as, as we kind of move along with the budget process. So um, that is all a bit of a preview uh, as, as we're going through this. But I certainly wanted to update the committee on that and happy to answer any questions that you all may have on that. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, open it up for questions. Um, Mayor Bracey or to the other committee members, uh, any questions of VJ for me? No. no. All right. Well, thank you for that update. VJ, this is Kim Bracey. I, I, I just have one question. And I think we sort of talked about it in another um, conversation. But are there any specific groups of retirees that we could have a conversation with? Sure, sure. Uh, I, I, yes, Mayor. I, I think I think in terms of uh, the question was, you know, is, is there anyone who we can kind of talk to about some of the uh, with, to try and get a hold of some of the retirees? And one one of the things is obviously communication in the era of COVID is not an easy thing to do. In most situations, what we would be doing is having a town hall meeting, bringing a lot of retirees in, sitting down, and kind of explaining the situation. We obviously can't do that uh, now. 
Uh, and so what we are thinking of doing, Mayor and uh, Mayor Bracey, in two aspects. One is there are groups out there who I think we can talk to. Uh, there are uh, unionized, uh, there are the unions uh, who we can talk to, the, uh, the FOP, uh, the IAFF, and the Teamsters. Uh, and I think they've, they've indicated their willingness to have conversations with their members uh, about the importance of, of why to do this. Because again, any, any savings we can get in that area, um, you know, we're looking to, to put back into operations uh, for the city. The other thing is we're, we're also um, considering trying to do some type of presentation for the retirees that outlines just the situation that the city is in. Um, and, and, and tries to at least get some facts out there because we're not exactly sure if the retirees understand how dire this situation is. I mean, again, to be very blunt with you, uh, absent a change here, a significant change here, the police pension fund will stop paying pensions early next year. It will run out of money. Um, and we don't have any money in the background um, that's gonna come in and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and be able to, to frankly bail this out for any period of time. And so um, you know, the message that we wanna make clear here is that we're gonna need everybody's help uh, in order to do this. And again, if one out of every three general fund dollars is already gonna be allocated for retiree costs, th that's no way, th there's no way we can run a city long term and invest in the city services to provide even a minimal level of city services to the residents of, of the city, um, which we, we, we just really won't be able to do that. So, so to your question, um, yes, there are groups out there and we are reaching out to them. Uh, and we're also trying to put together some type of a, a uh, kind of a, a, an educational process uh, that employees can, can, can understand. I will tell you that the city did reach out to employees in January of last year. Uh, with a letter asking them to move over to uh, the uh, Medicare supplemental plan, to sign up for Medicare and do so. And, and, and part of the difficulty they've been having is um, folks, frankly, not signing up for Medicare. And if you don't sign up for Medicare, which is the employee's, the retiree's decision, um, we can't put you on the Medicare supplemental plan. And frankly, the only resort that we have then is to tell you at some date certain, unless you move over, we're gonna turn your benefits off. Um, and so for some of these retirees, particularly police retirees who make up the bulk of that, you know, you're, you're basically faced with a double whammy of a pension fund that's about to run out of money early next year and the need for you to, be able, the need for you to move over to a plan that is, has got, got as good or better benefits. The Medicare supplemental plan, I talked about the prescription for the, um, for the city plan being a $1 retail prescription copay and a $3 mail order prescription copay uh, in the, um, you know, I, I believe in the, um, in, the uh, in the Medicare supplemental plan, uh, you've got a zero, I think you've got a zero generic and a $5 kind of non-generic copay for retail, which, which again is, is, is better than I think 90 some percent or 95 percent or whatever number of plan, percent of the plans that, uh, that, that you see out there. Uh, and so again, um, you know, there is, there, there's a lot of work to do in terms of educating people, and there's not a lot of time that we have in order to, to, um, to, to move forward with that. And BJ, if, if I may add, just, uh, I'm not sure if you... Thank you, BJ. If I may add... I think this uh, advisory committee meeting, I'm sorry. Advisory committee member, communication is obviously key, and, you know, whatever... I support the plan moving forward for the budget process, but I think, again, just from the advisory seat here, um, communicating as broadly and as widely as you can to whomever um, is going to be key, whether they live in Chester City anymore or, or even care for that matter, um, getting the message out that we can't sustain this is, is going to be key. I mean, a full newspaper ad, I don't know. <laughs> something you know we got to make sure your message is out there and and why you know part of the reason why the receiver was appointed so thank you guys for your work and that update on the budget process yeah i just wanted to add two points um uh to put in the context of these post-employment benefits and the situation that chester is in uh the first point i wanted to make is that 
the city currently pays more for retiree health care than it does for active employees. And that was point number one. And then number two, um, with the police pension, uh, former or police retirees receive more in pension payments than what it costs to uh, in salaries for the active department. Uh, pension, police pensions total about 6.6 .6 million a year, and the active um, police officers receive about 6.1 million in salaries. So, essentially, Chester is providing for two police departments, two of everything, and uh, just cannot continue to sustain that. So, um, and then to Mayor Bracey's point, that is, I think, the perfect segue into my update uh, to speak to. Uh, the public meetings. Uh, we did want to have a host a town hall or a public meeting we were aiming for this week. Unfortunately, we had to postpone that. Um, reason being, largely what VJ just uh, had laid out and wanting to shift the focus. Uh, our focus is going to be on the pu public, natural public meetings that occur through the budgeting process and also uh, a concerted effort to reach the retirees. So that messaging is still being crafted. Uh, but both of those uh, public meetings are, are on the horizon. They have to happen here in the near future. So in November, we probably, we most likely will be hosting uh, two, and I don't know to call it a town hall, a Zoom meeting. I, I don't know what the format is. As we've already spoken to, the communication is, is a challenge. But uh, that's our focus right now is communicating to, the, uh, one, the budgeting cycle, and then uh, reaching the group of retirees. So. Um, that's the main thing I wanted to say in my update. The other piece, uh, just wanted to speak to the normal budgeting cycle and where we are with that. Uh, I think it's safe to share. Uh, as we're working on the 2021 budget, we are, let me take one step back and, and say what our, what our focus is on as trying to do as much as we can within the current constraints. So another way to say that is reorganization. Where, where could we possibly uh, cut back on some things in the city budget, and then where do we need to enhance? Where do we need to beef up? Um, that restructuring is, is one aspect that's being focused on in the budget. Uh, and then another is the reinvestment into city services. Um, and then the third R is reduce. Reduce uh, the cost of uh, pension costs coming out of, out of the plan. So reducing cost, uh, reorganization, and then reinvestment into the city are the three R's that I'm, I'm reading, writing, and arithmetic to a whole nother level. Um, but that, that focus uh, through the budgeting cycle, current, current projections or where we're at in, the, in the developing the current budget is about a $5 million gap where expenses exceed uh, projected revenues. Um, to put that $5 million in perspective, that's about 10% of what the city brings in on an annual basis uh, uh, and 50 million in revenues through the various sources. So we have a $5 million uh, budget gap or a 10% budget gap, however you want to look at that, and uh, that puts further emphasis on the three R's. As we've been working over the last um, couple months uh, and progressing, we had to take a step back from a traditional town hall because all of our efforts right now are on trying to figure out how to close, close that gap for 2021. Obviously, we need to come up with a, a balanced budget by year end. So uh, the budgeting cycle is our primary focus. Uh, those public meetings are forthcoming. Uh, and then, if I could, I just uh, I neglected one group last week in, in extending thank yous uh, for the reception thus far here in the city. Um, and I wanted to specifically acknowledge the legislators, uh, state reps, and, uh, and, and all included have been uh, open and gracious and, uh, and, 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 and uh, willing to work with us on many of these endeavors. Um, regionalization is probably being pursued in, in 10 different ways, uh, but all cost-saving measures are on the table, and I just wanted to say in these difficult times, as many of them are currently actively campaigning and have a, a full slate uh, uh, sessions in, in Harrisburg and such, that they still have uh, made time to meet with us and, uh, and those conversations are ongoing. So those are my updates for, for this meeting. Any co questions of me or, or of EJ? All right, we're hearing none. Uh, we'll drop down into the next agenda item and that is the public comment. Uh, I don't 
don't know if it's a good or a bad, but I'll say for this committee meeting, we did not receive any public comment because the format has changed in the announcement of the, uh, the website last week. ChesterReceivership.com is receiving a lot of activity. We appreciate the foot traffic. Uh, that website is receiving a ton of, uh, of, of communications. Um, but to date, uh, sadly, I must say that all communications are still pertaining to the Chester Water Authority. So um, really nothing new to report on that end. Uh, that, that is uh, status quo. Uh, any other comments from the advisor?